Donald Trump and his defense team grow every day. We can see that they are expanding them, adding some new additions to the team. Here, the story from Politico gives us some details on who these people are. They tell us that Emil Bove is a former federal prosecutor. We've got Kendra Warden and others, and this is now the latest. Two new veteran attorneys added to the case. Donald Trump, four indictments now. Makes sense that the team is going to expand. We know that Jack Smith's prosecution is going to expand. They're looking at his finances now. We have people People like Cassidy Hutchinson, who was on the January 6th committee as a witness, might be coming out now as a witness, and there's a lot to unpack, so they need a bigger team. Emil Bove is a former federal prosecutor who was co-chief of the National Security Unit in Manhattan. Another woman named Kendra Wharton is a seasoned white-collar defense lawyer with Capitol Hill ties. They've signed on to the team that's being organized by Todd Blanch. And so I just want to pause and say shout out to these attorneys. There are many lawyers in this country who would like to represent Donald Trump, but would never have the courage to actually do it. And there's many who have been sidelined because of the threats that have been brought upon them. Emil Bove and Kendra Wharton are not those people. In recent days, Bove joined Blanche's firm and Wharton launched her own firm. She's expected to partner with Blanche, according to two people familiar with the team and granted anonymity to discuss. Bove and Wharton are going to be working on Trump's case, including in New York and the one brought by Alvin Bragg and the other one by by Jack Smith, but Trump has a fourth criminal case in Fulton County and he's got a separate defense team for that matter. That's interesting. Okay, so some New York people are handling the New York and the federal cases, and then probably Georgia people are handling it in Georgia. The additions are the most significant new legal hires in the months for Trump as he's prepared for multiple criminal trials. They're all scheduled next year. Bove and Warden are expected to help fill out a team that in some ways was hobbled when other lawyers left. We saw that John Rowley left, Tarla Torrey left, Trusty left. Since then, Blanche, also an alumnus of Manhattan, has emerged as the architect of Trump's legal defense strategy. So these are new people. Emil's an expert white collar and SIPA related stuff, which is the classified documents stuff, says Blanche. Says, we are thrilled and lucky to have him on our team defending Trump. Says, Brenda's brilliant. Our clients have trusted her for years. And she's gonna be providing the same expertise here as she has before. Blanche's hires coincide with Smith's own additions. So both sides are layering up. And we talked about this on a prior show, but Jack Smith's new lawyer, Alex Whitting, is actually scouting the team. Teams, right? He's going and watching the trials and was actually in courtroom of Judge Chutkin. Bove also handled investigations of Guao Wenguai, who was a colleague of Steve Bannon and others. So the teams are beefing up. The witnesses are also beefing up as well. And so this is a, the one of the latest additions. We know that Trump has two, I think, major cases that we're mostly concerned about. The big, big, big one is the January 6th case. And the January 6th case is going to have a bunch of witnesses. It's going to be sprawling it's the main insurrection charge, blah, blah, blah. One of the key witnesses that we've heard a lot from here via the January 6th select committee is Cassidy Hutchinson, also known as Clavicle Girl, who we believe, in my opinion, ma made up the story about Trump trying to reach across in the limo of the beast to grab the driver's clavicles, as Cassidy tells us, to deviate him to take the vehicle back over to the Capitol building to insurrect the country and seize the presidency or whatever. So she's got a new book out and she is now spreading all over the media, in my opinion, and continuing the great lies that we've already heard from her. And we've also got clips of Clinton and Scarborough who are hitting the airwaves and trying to create the narrative that they support. But this is Cassidy on with Jake Tapper. She literally might be a witness in Jack Smith's trial. We'll see. The other day, Trump suggested that the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, the outgoing chairman, General Mark Milley, committed treason. He suggested that capital punishment would be on the table or should be on the table. When you see a message like that, how seriously do you take it? I mean, Milley has suggested to people, according to the Atlantic magazine, that he expects if Donald Trump- Kind of a strange question for Cassidy. elected president again, that Donald Trump will go try to go after him. When you see that, do you think he means it? Or do you think, oh, that's just hot air? I do, Jake. I think that we have seen first. You think, I do, he think he means it. Yeah, I, I, I do believe that he means it. Now, I. What, but what I would like to say to this is, I think for years, we have not held Donald Trump accountable to, to the things that he says. And when he says those things, and when he strikes, when he strokes those vitriolic comments to people who have had profound careers defending our de democracy, like General Milley, we need to take him seriously. People have been holding him accountable for the past years, but obviously not accountable enough because we are in a position right now. I was, I was just gonna say- it's I was looking more like 
I was just, they, what do you mean they haven't held him accountable? He's been indicted four times. And she says, well, yeah, he kind of has been held accountable these last four years, but not enough, which means he needs to be jailed, prosecuted, and removed from the playing field. And I don't know what she's qualified for to comment on Trump's comments about Millie. Jake think that he's going to insurrect again or something and that her experience in the first insurrection qualifies her to comment on this new insurrection that they think is coming? Likely than not that he could be the Republican nominee. And he has also been indicted four times. To me, it is sad that we're in this place as a country where we are looking at somebody who has executed this horrible assault on our democracy and we are continuing to give this person a platform. That's not what we should stand for as Americans. And I think that Donald Trump is the most grave threat that we face to our democracy Get in our out. lifetime and potentially in American history. When wow. he says things like, wow, the gravest threat that we face in our lifetimes in American history, nothing else is bigger than Trump. He wants to use the Department of Justice to go after his enemies. When he says things he like he did on Truth Social Just the other like day, they're doing. He wants to curtail freedom of the press for certain channels and and that sort of thing. Just like you guys are doing. You guys are curtailing our freedom of the press, our freedom of speech. So if you have those same tools when you're in charge, why doesn't the right have those same tools when they're in charge? Take him literally. You think he actually means it and in a second term he would do that. I hope so. I think that Donald Trump in a second term does not... He better any, would not have guardrails. Good. I think we saw that at the end of the first term. That's with why how we're voting for played him out after he lost the election. Yes. He violated our constitution in multiple ways. It is it is completely fine to wage or to file lawsuits in sure. countries or in states. But what is not okay is when you threaten and assault the constitution and our institutions of government. I would not put it past Donald Trump, Jake, it to to put those institutions of government in a worse position that they were in during the first term. I don't even know what she said there, that the, gov- the government is gonna be in a worse position. All right, now I know we don't wanna listen to more of her. Here's a short one from Maddow. I can't speak to the psyche of my, I won't say my fellow Republicans because I do not is. think that we are a part of the same Republican party. No, we're not. I still consider myself a, re- a Republican. Why? I consider myself a Republican in the sense of Senator Mitt Romney and the Reagan Republican party. He's I believe not in, that he's the not Republican Republican party anymore. needs a strong conservative party. He's resigning. He's I do leaving. not believe that Mr. Trump is a strong Republican, but good. in this next That's election good. cycle, we don't like the Republicans. It's, in my opinion, it's the make or break moment for the Republican Party. Now is the time if these politicians, these men and some women that are currently in Congress want to make the break and want to take the stand, they have to do it now. Okay. You, we can't wait any longer for them to do it. I don't know why they're so well, so willing to support him. I think it's extremely disappointing and it is not- Hey, Cassidy, we've got your text messages. Hello, we've seen them. We've seen that you said that the January 6th Select Committee was a joke and that you wanted a legal counsel to help you with it and now you're changing your story and you made up a story about a class So it's just propaganda, okay? They have their new shiny object that they're bringing around. They're bringing this woman on all the shows. Tapper has her, Maddow has her. Look at all these very serious conversations. They did this same stupid thing when she testified in front of Congress. Liz Cheney did the same thing. And they just, I think they think she's a nice caricature. You know, she's a nice avatar. She probably polls well. And so they're just spreading her around to help her promote the book. But what she's talking about, okay, Trump making allegations, Trump trying to assault our democracy, all of these things, it was all based on the foundation of the election was fraudulent and rigged and that Trump was making a claim and that was the whole thing, right? Interfering with democracy, the peaceful transfer of power, blah, blah, blah. Hillary Clinton on this show Inside Jen Psaki is telling her that Russia still is responsible for interference in 2016. So she is still saying the same types of things that Trump has been prosecuted for today, and nobody's prosecuting her. Vladimir Putin uh, has obviously, your friend, your friend and mine, <laughs> yes, uh, indeed. he has uh, intervened in our election in the past. Right. It's not something, as you experienced firsthand, it's not something we talk about a lot. Do you fear that that is something that could be happening for 2024? And do you think we should be talking about it more? Well, I think we should be talking about it more because I don't think, despite all of the, you know, deniers, uh, there's any doubt that he interfered in our election or that he has interfered in many ways in uh, the internal affairs of other countries, funding political parties, funding, you know, political candidates, uh, buying off, uh, you know, government officials in different places. So that is his opus. 
uh, you know, his his opus operandi in the sense that he hates democracy. He particularly <laughs> hates the West, and he especially hates us. And he has determined that he can do two things simultaneously. He can try to continue to damage and divide us internally, and he's quite good at it. Mm. And sadly, he has a lot of apologists and enablers uh, in our own country. Putin just hates American democracy, okay? That's why he acts. It is so reductivist. It's so dumb. She can't even, it's like the lowest common denominator, okay? Putin's bad and Putin has allies. And who are Putin's allies? Trump people, right? That's how obvious, she's trying to connect the dots for the idiots who watch MSNBC. Three people who either don't see the danger or dismiss it out of hand, or maybe agree with some of the, uh, what, you the, know, positions the he's taken leaker, uh, on certain things, including uh, his barbaric invasion of Ukraine. And so Illegal dividing us and then that, trying to seize territory uh, in such a uh, brutal way to try to expand his reach, to try to restore the Russian empire, if not the former Soviet Union, that is who he is. Mm -hmm. I said that for years. Part of the reason he worked so hard against me is because he didn't think that uh, he wanted me uh, in the White House. So we are where we are. And part of the challenge is to continue to um, explain to the American public that, us. you know, the kind of leader Putin is, this authoritarian dictator who literally kills his uh, opposition, kills journalists, poisons people uh, who disagree with him, invades other country, interferes with our election. Um, that is part of the alternative we have to reject in this election. Okay. We have to reject authoritarianism. We have to oh. reject a kind of creeping fascism. Almost. Okay, so she's not dumb, right? I always have to give it to Hillary. Her talking points are good. I, I see when, when we zoom out from like a psychological, sociological perspective, from, a, from an influence mindset, from a persuasion, they're very good at it. Clinton and Hillary, are, Bill, Bill's very good at it too. Obviously it doesn't work on us, but for her people, what she's doing for everybody on MSN, M, MSNBC and everybody who watches Inside Gen Saki every Monday at 8 p.m., they follow the dots, right? They're following the bouncing ball. Putin is very bad. They've been propagandized every day. Putin, 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 Putin. Putin, 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 all the way since 2016 for crying out loud and before that. And they just, she just is, is conveniently just slotting Trump in, in this statement. And she's doing it pretty well, pretty masterfully, right? Transitioning into Putin is a fascist. And now we have to stop the same thing from happening here, implying that Trump is the fascist and mashing the two concepts together. Most of people who are really ready to turn over their thinking, their votes uh, to want to be dictators, and we can't allow that Trump. to proceed. Trump. So I think it's I think it's fair to say that uh, y you know you have a tough job because you have to talk about what's talk happening in the news, like but you also have yeah. to keep people's eyes on what's right behind the horizon. Uh -huh. And I fear that um, you know the Russians have proved themselves to be quite adept at interfering, and uh, if he has a chance, he'll do it again. He's gonna do it again. So in 2024, if Trump wins, guess what? Russians, man, Russian interference. It's coming, gonna happen again. Every time Hillary Clinton comes out and makes one of these stupid statements or Scarborough does, right? The reason I play it is just because I think it undermines their narratives in ways that arguments from the right couldn't do. Like when they come out and they say the Republicans are rigging the country, it sounds ridiculous. When Hillary Clinton still says that Russians interfered and they're gonna do it again after everything we know, it sounds ridiculous. And it, it, it just makes them and their credibility less powerful every day, but they keep doing it and their side gonna believe it. I'm sure MSNBC, they're like, yeah, Trump is Putin, you know, and, and the stuff, but that's all right. More and more people are waking up. Their lies are so apparent just on their face. We're gonna continue to cover it as Trump builds out the team, as these witnesses continue to emerge. We hope you join us as we do. Thank you for visiting robertgovea.com and signing up for our daily newsletter so you get this segment and more delivered right to your inbox after every show. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.